In this video, we're going to learn source number nine, which is from Rabbi Yisrael Meir HaKohen, also known as the Chafetz Chaim. You can find it in your textbook on page 208. I assume everyone here has heard of the Chafetz Chaim. He's named that for uh, one of his most uh, important books, the Chafetz Chaim. He's also the author of a very, very important sefer on halacha called Mishnah Brura, which I imagine many of you have heard of, maybe even have studied. And if you haven't, I hope you will in the future. Uh, he's fairly recent. He lived into the 20th century and passed away, I think, uh, in 1933. 1933, he passed away. Um, so he lived before the Holocaust, and that's important to understand. He lived in Radin, which is in uh, at that time was in Lithuania. And he wrote something very important, which is, uh, is significant to our understanding of the Mashiach in general, and to the issue which we began to discuss in the last in the sources of the last video, and which is going to be the main focus of the final part of our chapter, which is how to fit uh, our end, how to, how to fit an analysis of the events of the last decades into our understanding of the Mashiach uh, and the promise of the Mashiach, and what's supposed to happen, and where we are in that process, and that whole discussion. So let's read this together. The uh, essay. That we're about to read is part of a um, a work known as Tzipita Li Yeshua. Have you have you anticipated the redemption? And he writes the following. Let's read it together on page two oh eight. Hine Babonotenu Harabim Anu Roim Bechama Mekomot Shinitmotet Kiyum Hadat Meod Meod. He says we're living in a time that's very difficult when it comes to religion, and um, this is back in the nineteen twenties or so that he wrote this. If I remember correctly, and uh, he says that uh, in our generation, religion has basically collapsed. People are not observing the religion any longer. <speaking in Hebrew> Children are being raised without connection to Torah. <speaking in Hebrew> this wasn't the case several generations ago, he says. <speaking in Hebrew> and if we want to understand what's going on, why is it that suddenly there's so much secularism and there's so little commitment to Torah compared to what used to be the case. We'll find that there are several reasons for this. But the main reason, the main reason why people are abandoning religious observance, says the Chafetz Chaim, is a weakness of faith, a weakness of emunah. Belief, emunah, Faith in all of these fundamental principles and the fact that there is an eternal world and that there is reward and punishment and that the Mashiach is going to come, and everything else that it says in the Torah, those beliefs, it was those beliefs that gave us strength in the past to withstand all of the troubles that we had. It's what gave us the strength to, to, um, to withstand all pressure and to to remain faithful. We were willing even to give up our lives or even the lives of our children for these things because we believed in them so greatly. It was at the point that a person would rather, God forbid, See his children slaughtered in front of him and know that they died on Kiddush Hashem and lived a holy life and died a holy death and went straight to Shamayim. That for him was better than the idea of seeing his children in theory very happy and living wonderful lives, but knowing that they had given up their connection to Torah. Torah was so important to people in the past because, uh, to the point that they were willing to give up their lives and even the lives of their children for it, because it meant so much to them, because they had such strong faith. Today that faith is weakened and therefore it doesn't mean almost anything to some people. Achein b'avonotenu harabim, second paragraph. Kayom itzliach maseh satan. The satan, the forces of evil, has had succeeded in our generation, he says. Al yidei shulcha barabim, l'rapot shoshei emunah mikar v'israel. The forces of evil, the satan, has managed to weaken the foundations of faith. Hein b'sachar v'onish behein b'yudeh anavim. People don't believe anymore in reward and punishment, and they don't believe really in in, in anything that the prophets promised us. V'kasher roim et godel mitzukot v'atlod shovrim alene b'chol yom. And without this faith, when people see the difficult challenges, remember this is 1920s he's writing this, before all the terrible things started happening by the Nazis. But even back then there was a lot of problems. And he says when, he, when people see how difficult our lives are, 
מדמים בנפשם שהקדוש ברוך הוא הסתיר פניו ממנו לגמרי. They say God must have abandoned us. ומתייאשים מן הגאולה, and there's no, no hope for גאולה. ואינם מחכים למלכות שמיים כלל. They give up with all the great promises and all the great uh, hopes that Am Yisrael lived on for generations. People give up on all these things. וכל אחד פונה לעצמו and people start just worrying about their own life. מבקש עצות, הן בהיתר, הן באיסור, הן לפרנס עצמו ובני ביתו. People start to give up on all the great national dreams of the Jewish people, and they start worrying about themselves and their families. How can I support my family, whether it's permitted, whether it's prohibited? The main thing is just to be able to get by. People have just given up on all the great dreams and all the great, uh, all the noble visions that Am Yisrael stands for. al Cain says the Chafetz Chaim, last paragraph on the page, and then we'll move into the next page, 209. So I decided I have to write this, this essay to, to explain this to people. I want them to understand that it's not that God has abandoned us. To the contrary. In our generation with all the problems and all the weakness of faith, it's actually more appropriate to expect a, a quick redemption because the Geula is actually very close, even though it looks so far. And why is that? Principle. When a person uh, tries to understand how the Geula is supposed to work, as written in the, in the Torah, in the book of Dvarim, when I'm page 209 now, when I'm page 209 now, in principle, in theory, it looks like we're really not. Um, it looks like we're really not close to the Gula because it says in the Torah. We looked at those psukim a few weeks ago, girls. That that the Gula is going to come when we do tshuva, and only when we do tshuva we return to Hashem. Then Hashem is going to return us to Him. But what it looks like now, lo klal. It looks like the the generation is nowhere near close to that. It looks like. Looks like we're very far from tshuva, and that allows people to, to give up hope. Avala tshuva alze, but the, the response to that is, kifi I'm going to explain that it's not so simple like it looks. It looks perhaps like our generation is completely removed from Torah, far away from doing tshuva, and therefore if there is going to be a gula, it's so far away that it's almost unfathomable. But that's a mistake, says the Chavitz Chaim. And I'll prove it to you. Dinei lechora kashe lanu zot al chazal atzmam. Because if that's your attitude, the question you have is not on our generation. The question you have is on the rabbis of the Talmud. Why? When the rabbis spoke about the coming of the Mashiach, they said things that don't sound so positive. For example, there's a, a, a statement that appears in a few places. Be'ikva de Mashiach. In the generation right before the Mashiach comes, chutzpah yezgei. There'll be a lot of chutzpah. There'll be a lot of uh, irreverence. People will be acting disrespectfully. Ve'ain tochacha, and no one's gonna, no one's gonna listen to rebuke. Narim pnei zekinim yalbinu. Children will be disrespectful to elders. They'll embarrass old people. Vizekinim yamdu b'fnei ketanim, and the old people will have to. We'll have to serve and, and respect the young people. Ben men abel av. Children will, will despise their parents. Bat kama bima v'kala b'chamota. Little girls will disrespect their mothers. And oivei ish on shei beto. People's families will be broken apart. This is the way the, the, the generation of the Mashiach is described by Chazal. Od sham. And another statement there. Chochmata sofrim tisrach. People will stop having knowledge. People will be uh, stopping caring about doing sins. And truth will become absent. Um, so, Od Sham, let's skip a line. Another statement there. Ain Ben David Ba, the Mashiach's not going to come. Ad Shi Rabu Amal Shinut, until people start telling lies about one another and all sorts of things like that. According to those very, very 
pessimistic descriptions of what things are going to be like before the Mashiach comes, that people are disrespectful and people are not following the rules. So actually, it looks like our generation is really there. So the question is, there's also all sorts of descriptions there about how there's going to be all kinds of wars and troubles before the Mashiach comes. He says, so actually, if you look at our generation, we have wars, we have troubles, we're suffering, people are disrespectful, they're not following the Torah. That's exactly what the rabbis say is about to happen right before the Mashiach comes. Of course, one needs to understand why that should be. But that's exactly what the rabbis said. Ulichora yipalei. But, but, but the question again is, what did the rabbis mean by saying that? Because from the Torah, it looked like it should be the opposite. It sounds from the Torah that the gula is going to come, the redemption, the Mashiach is going to come when we, when we do tshuva, when we return to God. Um, and in fact, here you see that, uh, that it's the opposite, what the rabbis say. So this needs to be explained. Next paragraph. I can explain this in several ways. The most important point, he says, He says both approaches, namely, that the Mashiach is going to come as a result of tshuva, as a result of Jews returning to God, and that the Mashiach is going to come at a time where people are very, very distant from God, which seem to contradict. Both of those statements, he says, are actually true. The acharit, um, in a bolded sentence now, the acharit on the middle of 209, the acharit zman agiula yimatsu shnei sugei anashim. At the time of the redemption, there will actually be, he says, two types of people. Ushnei hem yazru bekeru vagula. And these two very different types of people will both have a role in advancing the redemption, as I will explain. She yimatsu chelek anashim be Israel. Some of the people in Am Yisrael will be, Asher Yechazku Atzmam Lavod HaTashem, will be working very hard on themselves to serve God, B'chol Avavam B'chol Nafsham, to put all of their energies into serving Hashem, Heim Uvnehem, and to raise their children to do the same. Veheim Heim Shlomei Emunei Yisrael Ovdei Hashem Shabbador Hazeh. And that's the, the people who are observing Torah in our generation, what we call today the religious, the orthodox. That's what he means. Those are the people who are committed to Torah, and are committed to raising their children to lives of Torah. And those people are one of the two groups. And that's going to be very important, because at a time when people are writing all these books and all sorts of other things with kfira, books that deny the Torah and, and try to weaken people's faith, or they do other things that to arouse people's desires and all sorts of things to entice people to leave the Torah. There'll be a time when there's a lot of forces trying to destroy the study of Torah and the observance of mitzvot. And that's going to weaken people's faith. At that time, So then those people who heroically devote themselves to observing every, every last aspect of Torah, and, and make sure to do everything they can not to be weakened in their, in their faith and their observance, and do everything they can to raise their children to follow in that path. Not to deviate right or left from what the Torah says. Such people who work so hard in such difficult conditions to maintain the supremacy of Torah, to learn Torah, to teach Torah, to, to observe the Torah, Without a doubt, those people are reaching very high levels because it's very difficult to do that. They're working so hard and it's so difficult. Whatever they accomplish is much more difficult for them than it was for previous generations. We know it says in the sources that the more difficult something is, the more valuable it is. And therefore, Bavodat Hashem Yiparach Ka'eit, He Torah Unikia, She'ein Ba Matara, Lechavod Oshar Piniot, Ki Adara, Banit Kayim Bana Bavonotin Rabim, Visar Mira, Mishtolel Abriot, Virei Hashem Yimasu, Eitzel Kamasu Gayan Hashem. So he says, 
though even if most of the people today have abandoned Torah, that small group of people that remains devoted to Torah gets so much credit, and what they do is so valuable precisely because it's so difficult. And he goes on to praise these people. The Yeshan Hashim, he says, there are people today, he says there are people who are living in total poverty, who are very, very poor, and they could move to places where it would be easier to earn a living, but to do that, they'd have to leave their communities and go to places where it's difficult to observe Torah life, and they choose instead of moving to a place where they could earn a lot more money and live much better on a material level, they would choose to remain in a Jewish community, living in poverty, and from the little bit of money they make, they take some of that money to pay tuition so that their children can learn Torah. Look at the sacrifice these people are making, and because it's so difficult, their sacrifice is that much greater. So this group of people, the minority that's remaining devoted to Torah in a world when most people aren't, they are bringing the Geulah much closer. But there's also another group. Now we're at the bottom of 209, the bolded part. But our rabbi spoke about this also and told us this in the beginning. So the rabbi explained exactly what's going to happen when the Mashiach comes. Before the Mashiach comes, the world is going to have all sorts of challenges to Emunah. And and some people are going to be very heroic in maintaining their Emunah. But they told us that not everybody is going to withstand the test. And when there are all these challenges, people are going to fall. The rabbis told us that a generation will arise, which will not be following Torah values. A small minority of them will, but most of them will not. Rabbis described exactly what's going to happen and what we see is happening in our time. That most of the people are not committed to Torah and they're actually from a religious perspective on a very low level. And everyone's going to do whatever they think. And they're, and they're going to be, they're going to have chutzpah, they're going to be disrespectful to their elders, to their parents, to their rabbis. And they're not going to listen. So even though the rabbis told us exactly what we see happening, that there are going to be these tremendous challenges, and although some people will withstand the challenges and do things that are very heroic, most people won't. I'm on page 210 now. We shouldn't be depressed about that. Because that's also part of the redemption. That's also a sign that the Gula is coming. Just like that first group, the group of people that are very devoted, are going to bring the redemption closer through their positive actions. But those others, the ones who reject the Torah, they will also bring the redemption closer. They also are fulfilling a role. Why? Why are people who are violating the Torah bringing the redemption closer? How does that work? Bahainu, he says, In earlier generations, when things were going the way they're supposed to go, the and the Jewish people basically observed the Torah like they're supposed to do. Ha'avot masulif nehemet yisodeyaimunaviadat. Parents passed on the principles of faith to their children. And children willingly accepted lovingly what their parents taught them. As we say in the Torah, this is the way things are supposed to work. When that was happening, when people were following the Torah and faithfully transmitting it to their children, first wide line, and everybody just wanted to learn Torah and do mitzvot. Therefore, the Gula wasn't so urgent. Mashiach could wait. Nothing will happen. People were preserving the Torah. So if the Mashiach won't come now, okay, we'll survive until the time comes. And therefore, as every generation passed, and the Jewish people faithfully preserved the Torah from generation to generation, it was possible to allow the Geulah, to allow the redemption to wait, and 
the merit of the Jewish people increased in each generation from what they did by passing on the Torah and preserving it. Um, okay, next, skip to the next paragraph. Line uh, 17. Everything I just said was when was, was valid at a time when people's foundation in faith was strong. People had faith in the Torah and they followed it. But in our generation, where we see that people are violating the Torah brazenly, with all kinds of ideologies which are against the Torah and against the Munah, against belief in God. So, most of the young people have had the flame of belief extinguished within them. And many are rejecting what, they, what their parents had are trying to teach them. And they think they're smarter or wiser than all those previous generations. You have these young people who look at their parents, their grandparents, and their older people, and they say, ah, those people are from an old world, they're from bygone days, we, we, we're modern, we're enlightened, we understand. And they think they understand better. These young children who think they understand better than, than their elderly grandparents and wise teachers. And they even think they know better than the rabbis of the Talmud. The rabbis of the Talmud were like angels. And these young people think they know better than those ancient rabbis. Line 25, I skipped a bit. It's terrible that this is the situation in our days, but the who can vuat chazal? But that's exactly what the rabbi said was going to happen. She chutzpah yiske that that in the time of the Mashiach, there's going to be an up uh, upswelling. Like there's going to be a lot of chutzpah, a lot of chutzpah, brazenness. She gadlu ad maol ba vanotein rabbi umimela in bechol tavot dem sol abanim et kabalatam. And in such a world, parents have no ability to transmit the Torah to their children. It's interesting if you compare this to what we read from Rav Kook in a previous chapter. Rav Kook spoke about roughly the same generation that the Chavetz Chaim was speaking about. And he said the problem is that the parents and Munah is weak and they're not able to transmit it to the great the great level of their children. The Chavetz Chaim is taking a different view here. He's saying the parents are actually the ones who have the knowledge and the children, it's not that the parents are unable to, uh, are not on the level of the children to transmit the Torah. That's the way Rav Kook saw it. The Chavetz Chaim says the opposite. The children are rejecting everything and therefore they don't listen to anything the parents have to say. But they both agree about the, the situation that even if they disagree about the cause, the parents are not succeeding in transmitting the Torah values to their children. Um, and both the Chavetz Chaim and Rav Kook said, but that means the Gula is Dafka close, even though it might look the opposite. And how is that according to the Chavetz Chaim? So... So skip now to um, to the next line. In Cain, ain shum toelet near tzepe arichut agalut. In a world like this, where the Torah is not being transmitted to the next generation, there's no point in the Giula being extended any further. Kevan she kabbalah olechef in second chas b'chalia. In fact, it's dangerous. If we if 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 the Mashiach doesn't come soon, then God forbid the Torah will be lost because a new generation is going to rise that's going to reject it. And sometimes we see worse, that the children even reject, go actively against, try to destroy everything the parents built, not just refuse to accept it. The bolded part, That means that the Mashiach has to come now, because Hashem is not going to allow Am Yisrael to to be lost, and the Torah, and Hashem's not going to allow His Torah to be lost. Nimza. So it turns out So it turns out that both groups of people, both types of people that we see nowadays, they both are bringing the redemption closer. Eila, those who are preserving the Torah, 
are bringing the Geula closer by Maseyem Atovim, the Godel HaMitzukot Shehem Sovlim, by doing all the great heroic acts that they're doing and suffering as much as they are to do so. They are bringing the Geula closer. And these other people, the ones who are rejecting the Torah, are also bringing the redemption closer because they're creating a situation which makes it necessary for the redemption to come. Obviously, it's clear that a person should choose to be among those who are preserving the Torah than among those who are rejecting it. But both groups have a role to play, and therefore it is specifically our generation which is going to be the generation of the Geulah. The call zeh shekatavnu mirumaz b'torah b'farshat ha'azinu. And he says this also, if you read carefully at the end of Sefer Tzvarim, even though the be- if you read, you know, just quickly it doesn't sound that way, but if you read carefully it's clear that all of this is really what the Torah was saying. So this is a fascinating analysis uh, that the Chafetz Chaim gave of his generation. I don't think he could have known the terrible horrors that were going to come upon his community in Lithuania and in nearby Poland just a few years later. Uh, but he saw that the situation was very, very dire, and he declared that this means that the, the Geula must be coming soon.